Hello everybody and welcome to a new video in the Generative Music AI course. Last time we looked at the theory behind generative grammars. Today we are going to take that theory and implement it in Python code. In particular, we're going to be building a Lindenmayer system that generates core progressions. Before we get into it, I just want to mention that throughout part two of the course, I'm going to be creating scripts with Python 3.8. Let's take a quick look at the L system that we want to implement for generating core progressions. So here you have all the elements that define this L system. The alphabet is made up of a number of symbols that map directly onto code names. As you can see, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. These are all the diatonic chords that you can create on the C major scale, like A minor, B minor, C major, so on and so forth. The starting symbol, the starting chord or axiom for us is going to be A minor. And then we have four production rules. I'm going to read a couple of them for you. So whenever we encounter an A minor chord, this is going to be replaced, transformed into a sequence of three chords, A minor, B minor, and C major. For B minor, whenever we encounter this symbol, the transformation will be into two chords, another B minor and an A minor. The output of this L system is obviously going to be a string with a sequence of symbols, but that's not what we really want. We want to get that output and convert it into a score. In other words, we want to pass from this output sequence that could be C major, F major, G major, C major to this, a score representation. In order to do that, we're going to be using a quite popular package in music analysis in Python called Music21. Music21 is a fantastic package that everybody interested in symbolic music and music technology in general should be aware of. It comes with a lot of goods that you can use to represent music in Python and then convert that onto all sorts of scores, like music XML scores or MIDI scores. Music21 offers an array of objects that you can use to represent music. For example, a note class, a parts class, or a score. We don't have time to cover all the mechanics of Music21, but if you're interested, I've covered some of those intricacies here in this video. It's time to dive into the implementation. Here you can see the Generative Music AI course repository. It's divided into different folders. Each folder is dedicated to one lecture. We're at this point, at lecture number 10, if you open it, you're gonna have both the code and the slides here. So we're gonna get into the code and here there's a script called L system. I won't be implementing everything from scratch, but rather I'm gonna walk you through the code that's highly commented. I want to show you the output of this script first. So I'm gonna just go down here to the main function. This is the entry point for the whole script. So let's analyze this step by step. First, we define the axioms and the production rules like this. Then we pass them onto the constructor for the L system class. We get an L system object and then we can call this iterate method on the L system object and we're gonna get a chord sequence. Here we should pass a number, in this case we pass four, and this number is the number that determines how many times the rules will be applied. So how many times we iterate and we apply production rules onto the initial axiom. Let me show you an example of what this chord sequence may look like. It's simply a string. It's gonna be something like this, A, B, C, D, C, A, B. Something like that, right? So that's the output of the L system. But that's not enough for us. We want to convert that output into a score. So what we'll do is we'll pass this chord sequence, this string, into this utility function that's gonna take that sequence of chords or chord names and convert them into music 21 chords. 
it's going to be so the output is going to be a list of music 21 chord objects then once we have this list we're going to pass it into this other utility function called create and show music 21 score this one takes a list of music 21 chords it converts it into a music 21 score and then it displays the score i've connected music 21 to music score that's a music editing software so that we can easily visualize the result here i'm going to run the script first so that we analyze the result then we're going to dive deep into the different components of this script so let's run this here we go and as you can see music score just opened and here we can listen to the result so i'm gonna run it here in music score or musical So that's the sequence generated by the L system. And up here, I also want to show you the output after different iterations. And we'll see that this print statement happens within the L system class. So output after the first iteration, we're gonna have A, B, C. Then after the second iteration, you'll see that the string uh, expands. So we're gonna have expansions and the application of production rules at each iteration until we get to this final string. That's the one that we've converted into a music 21 score and then we've visualized. Okay, so now that we have an idea of the result of the script and how it works on a very high level, let's jump into all the different aspects one by one. Let's take a look at the L system class first. So the L system class is a general representation of an L system and it provides all the necessary functionality for generating sequences of strings based on an initial axiom and a set of production rules. This class is not specific to chord progression generation, but you can generate any type of string sequences regardless of the particular mapping. The constructor for the class takes two arguments, an axiom and rules. An axiom is the is a string and that's the initial symbol and then we have production rules this is a dictionary where keys are symbols and values are the corresponding replacement strings for example this could be a production rules dictionary that we can pass so we have the symbol a let's say the a minor chord and we convert that we transform that into A, B, C, A minor, B minor, C major, for example. And here, of course, like we have three different public attributes, axiom, rules, and output. At the beginning, we default the output to the axiom. We can derive the alphabet of this L system dynamically. Indeed, we can define this as a property. We can infer the alphabet of the L system directly from the axiom and the production rules. Indeed, we can take the set of the axiom and all the values of the production rules dictionary. The only public method of the L system class is iterate. And what this does is to apply the production rules to the current output n times. Indeed, we take a parameter here, it's an int, this n is the number of times the rules are to be applied. It's the number of iterations or rewriting iterations that we want to apply. The return is a string and that's the output after applying the rules, the production rules n times. This method is quite straightforward. We iterate n times and at each step we do the following. First, we create the next output and in order to get the next output, the next string output, we apply this private method called iterate once and under the hood here, we just apply all the production rules once. We get the next output, we assign it to the output public 
attribute, then we have a print statement where we mention that output after the nth iteration is equal to output. And that's what we saw in the output of the script that we run earlier. Once we've done this multiple times until we get let's say, uh, the number n, so we have all the iterations that we wanted, then we can store the final output here in this temporary variable, and then we are gonna reset the output. What this does, obviously, is just like setting the outputs to the original axiom. We do this so that if we want to rerun iterate, we just start from scratch and not from the current output. Okay, if we go back here, the final thing that we do is just returning the final output. Let's dive deeper into this iterate once private method. So iterate once applies the production rules to the current output just once. Okay, and what we get as a return is the output after applying all the production rules once. Okay, let's take a look at how this works. First, we are gonna generate a list of symbols. And how do we do this? Well, we apply the rule of that particular symbol for each symbol that we have in the current output. And that's a list comprehension. And what we're gonna get is a list of symbols. But we don't deal with lists, but rather with strings. So at the end of the day, what we do is a join of all the items in this list of symbols so that we can get a string. In other words, what we're gonna get here is something that looks like this, say A, B, C, and then after we apply this join, we are gonna get this relative string here, A, B, C, like that. The final piece of the puzzle here is this apply rule private method. What this does is quite straightforward because it, it applies a production rule to a given symbol. And indeed, the argument that this method takes is a symbol, and that's the symbol to which we want to apply a rule. What we return is a string, and that's the transformed symbol or the original symbol if there are no production rules associated to that particular symbol that we get as an argument. Let me show you how this works real quick. So we just get from the production rules dictionary the value associated to the key represented by our symbol. If that doesn't exist, then what we do is we default back to the symbol. Let me explain this with a simple example. So we'll go back to our super straightforward production rules dictionary. Of course, there are many rules in this dictionary usually, but in this case, we just have one. Okay, so let's assume that we pass A to this apply rule, then what we're gonna get is A, B, C, because we're gonna get the value associated to uh, the key that represents our symbol, so A, B, C. Let's assume with this production rules dictionary, we pass B. Now, there's no B here to be found in the production rules dictionary, so what we're gonna return is B itself. Let me, let me delete this. Let's go back to the main script so that we can reanalyze what we've seen so far. So we start from the axiom and a production rule dictionary, we pass it to the L system, to the constructor so that we get an L system object, then we get a court sequence by applying the iterate method to the L system object. And now at this point, we have a string of chord names. Next, what we want to do is get music 21 chords. So we are gonna be using this utility function. I'm gonna explain this super quick. So we get the chord sequence and that's basically just the L system generated output. So that's a string. And what we do with this uh, function is to translate the L system generated chord sequence into a list of music 21 chords. How do we do that? Well, we have first of all a chord dictionary 
here and these as you can see represent C major, D minor, E minor and so on and so forth. So here we have the chord names or symbols that we use in the L system and here we have the associated pitches to that particular chord name. And what we want to do is basically take the sequence and output the corresponding chord progression in Music 21 format. And this is going to be a list of Music 21 chord objects. So what we do is we create a list comprehension and we're going to be instantiating a chord associated to each of the symbols that we have in the chord sequence and in particular to instantiate this music 21 chord we should pass all the relative notes as a list for a particular chord so we're going to do this like for each chord name so we for oops for each chord name we're going to instantiate a chord object passing the relative notes that we can fetch from this chord dictionary but we're going to do it if and only if that chord name that symbol actually exists in the chord dictionary we need this conditional statement in order to avoid key errors because otherwise if you pass a chord name that exists in the chord sequence but it doesn't exist say for example z here in chord dictionary we're going to get an error from python now we have a list of music 21 chords the last thing that remains to do is to create and show the music 21 score let's take a look at this final function it's a utility function that takes a list of music 21 chords that we've just generated and it creates and displays a music score using the music 21 library Let's take a look at how this works. First, we are going to instantiate a Music 21 score object. And in this object, we can put all the necessary music information, notes and notation that we want. It's an overall wrapper for a score. Then we're going to set a title as a metadata on the score object. And in our case, we're going to set this title, L System Core Progression. Then we want to create a Music 21 part object. What is a part? Imagine you're dealing with an orchestral score. An orchestral score is divided into loads of different instruments. You can have first violins, second violins, viola, flutes, bassoon. Each of those instruments is going to be a different part. In other words, a score is made up of multiple parts. In our case, we just need a single part object. Now that we have a part object, we're going to loop through all the symbols, all the chords that we have here in our Music 21 chords list. And we're going to append each chord to the part. Finally, we're going to append the part to the score. Finally, we run a score.show that's what allows us to see this score nicely displayed in MuseScore. Here you have it, the implementation of an L system for generating chord progressions. If you want to check out the code and the slides, remember that you can find the link to the GitHub repo that hosts all of them for all lectures in the description box. I invite you to experiment with this code. Why don't change production rules or the initial axiom? The best thing you can do is to implement a variation of the L system class that implements a traditional generative grammar as we've seen it in the previous lecture. Before you go, please remember to smash the like button and to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. You can't imagine how much this helps me and the channel to grow. Next up, we're going to be looking into another algorithm that's been extensively used in generative music. That is Markov chains. That's all for today, folks. I'll see you next time. Take care.